There are many archaeological remains scattered around the world, several of which relate to tracking the movement of the sun. One such find lies hidden in a deep mountainous valley north of Nagoya in an area known as Kaneyama. There are three groups of stones that make up the Kaneyama megaliths. They all reside in an area known as Iwaya. The first group is called Iwaya Iwakage, or Iwaya Shadow Casting Stone. Senkoku, or Curved Lines Rock, is next, and then we have Higashinoyama, or Eastern Mountain, in the photograph to the right. Between the summer and winter solstice periods, there are five observation points that can be used to observe the sun's rays and divide a calendar year into four distinct seasons. This is similar to solar calendars used in ancient Egypt. Another important find in the Iwaya Iwakage group uses a window formed to focus the sun's rays on a predetermined point to indicate leap year. After studying this site, Mr. Kobayashi felt that it was indisputable proof of its solar calendar functionality. The following comments are a direct translation of Mr. Kobayashi's thoughts after discovering the markings on Senkoku. Senkoku has three ellipsoidal shapes carved into its surface by the megalith builders. From the moment that I saw these shapes, I knew that a more in-depth survey needed to be conducted. My initial thoughts were to determine the reasons why these shapes were made and what they were made to indicate. In further study of these mysterious shapes, I determined them to be of ancient man-made origin. This fed my desire to continue the investigation and conduct a more comprehensive survey. First, let's look at the relationship between the location of Kaneyama megaliths and the path of the sun across the sky. Kaneyama megaliths are located in a valley that lies on a direct line connecting the point of summer solstice sunrise and the point of winter solstice sunset in this particular location. The red line shows the path of the sun. North is indicated at the top of this map. Higashinoyama lies furthest to the east, Senkoku far off toward the west, and just slightly further west is Iwaya Iwakage. It is a somewhat remote and truly beautiful area. Ironically, not many hikers or campers visit here. This is probably why the secrets of the megaliths have remained hidden for such a long period of time. In this location, summer solstice sunrise can be observed at the Senkoku site and winter solstice sunset at Iwaya Iwakage. Mr. Kobayashi has stated that prior to finding Higashinoyama, Initial surveys of Senkoku and Iwaya Iwakage left him wondering if there may be another site lying on the line toward the east that connected these first two sites. He further stated that this would complete the purpose of the solar calendar by having an observation point for winter solstice sunrise. After a careful search of the surrounding area, he found the Higashinoyama site. All of the evidence gathered up to this point left Mr. Kobayashi doubtless that these sites were all used together to function as a solar calendar. The location of the structures and their construction and placement made this indisputable. This chamber was built at Senkoku to capture rays from the sun. Light enters the chamber from the south during summer solstice. Captured light forms a shape that can be compared to a similar shape carved onto the outside surface. Each carved shape corresponds with a specific period during the calendar year and are used to help make this determination. Additionally, 
A large groove is carved into the outside surface of this stone. This is another observation point and is used as the sun reaches zenith. It occurs daily during the summer solstice at 3 o'clock every afternoon. The purpose of this groove is to show the azimuth and elevation of the sun, which is used to determine the summer solstice. The three markings and two parallel lines are believed to have been used as a guide. The three markings are exact replicas of sunlight patterns that strike the chamber floor. The parallel lines are believed to represent the angle that sunlight enters the chamber. This video footage shows an interesting pattern of summer solstice sunlight striking the surface of a triangular stone in the Sankoku group. By May 21st, the sunlight begins to enter a chamber presenting a sunlight replica of the carved shapes found on the outside surface. After July 22nd, light no longer penetrates into the chamber. When light first begins to enter the chamber until it fades, the total elapsed time is 63 days. Summer solstice lies in the middle of this period. The builders used the same method to observe winter solstice at the Iwaya Iwakage site. Light enters a chamber between October and February for a period of 119 days. These two photographs were taken at the Iwaya Iwakage site. In the photograph on the right, the ray of light that you see entering the chamber helps us calculate leap year. This will be explained in further detail. As previously mentioned, Iwaya Iwakage sunlight observations enable us to make leap year calculations. Light enters this chamber from February 28 through October 14 for a total of 228 days. Light does not enter the chamber from October 14 through February 28, a period of 137 days. The figures you see here show a normal year with 137 days where light does not enter the chamber. The number 228 represents the number of days where light does enter the chamber. The difference between the number of days where light does enter the chamber, 228, and where it does not enter the chamber, 137, is 91 days. Again, this is during a normal year. During a leap year, light enters the chamber for 229 days. The number of days where light does not enter the chamber is 136. The difference between these two figures is 93 days. So every year, the difference in the number of days with sunlight entering the chamber and not entering the chamber changes from 91 days during normal years to 93 days during leap year. Another interesting way to look at these figures is as shown here. 91 plus 91 plus 91 plus 93 days is a total of 366 days, the number of days in a leap year. The position of the Earth relative to the Sun has changed slightly over time since these sites were built. This has caused calculations to change slightly as well, but what does remain constant is that leap year comes once in every four years and adds one day to the year. Evidence uncovered thus far has left no doubt as to the reason why Kaneyama Megalith was originally built. The pictures in this poster represent a yearly cycle beginning with the summer solstice, autumn equinox, winter solstice, and the spring equinox.
paleomagnetic research was conducted and has shown that many artifacts around the sites are approximately 8,000 years old. There is also evidence of the wedges that the builders used to move these stones to their current locations. Remains of some of these tools have been discovered and remnant magnetization in the stones themselves provide further proof that they were moved from their original locations to their current locations. The sites are believed to be no less than 3,000 years old, but could be much older. Current estimates place them between 3,000 to 5,000 years old. Upon finding the carvings at the Senkoku Stone, I was surprised and delighted that this obviously ancient and man-made artifact has been here in our midst all this time. The people who lived in this area over the centuries have been aware that the stones were arranged by ancients from time beyond any written documentation. They have been a part of our local scenery for centuries and were more or less taken for granted. The curved line markings began to point me in a direction to discover the true purpose of these stones. It sparked my imagination and once I began to make progress toward understanding this mystery, it became truly exciting. I have great fondness for nature and am very interested in understanding our ancient ancestors. This discovery has brought me closer to the builders of the megaliths than I ever dreamed possible. I feel that these megaliths are a gift to us all from the people who created them and they are a testament to the intelligence and ingenuity of the Jomon people.